I'm Dave Ford. This is the fourth in a series of screencasts that I'm producing to show how we can use Excel to create matching pair exercises. In the last screencast we got as far as creating the mechanism to see if the answers were correct and then it gave us a total at the top of how many are correct which it then displayed here in this box here. So the next step that we're going to do on the previous page we had the thing for check answers which is going to become the hyperlink to take us forward to this page. What we're going to do now here is create the link back to the to the test page. Now rather than me just putting a straightforward link in, I'm actually going to put in an if statement again. So it's equals if and this time the logical test will be is that cell there equal to 10? If it is, then the text that we're going to use will be well done because you've got them all correct. If, the, if that cell there is not equal to 10, it means that they've got some wrong. So what we're going to do now is replace that text with uh, oops, sorry, um, something like return, return to test and close brackets. So because we haven't got 10 correct. You see there that it's changed the text to return to test. What I'm going to do now is make that into the hyperlink. So I'm going to go up to the insert menu and hyperlink. And I'm going to hyperlink back to a sheet called test. And OK. And I can format that so I can make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to knock it up to, say, 16. OK. I'm also going to increase that text so that says 16. I'm going to get rid of the formatting there that I didn't require and get rid of the border that I don't require. What we can now do is I'm going to format these cells just so it's got a colour so that students see it's slightly different to before so I'm just going to give it a light green and we're going to hide these bits of working because these are no longer required. Okay, This here isn't required at all now, that's just what was copied from the previous sheet. So I'm actually going to delete it so that it's not in the way at all and it can't confuse us in the future. One other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come back, I'm going to right click Format Cells and I am going to make sure that that there is locked. Okay, so that the students can't edit the information here. So this is my test sheet and that's pretty much formatted. Okay, there's a couple more things I'll come back and sort out in a bit. If I go back to my test sheet, now here we can't delete this table because it will mean that these formulas don't work, but we need to hide. So I'm going to select the rows by clicking and dragging my mouse down. So I can select all those rows there. I can then right click and I can hide. So the students can't get to see what the answers are because they're, they're hidden. Oh, before we do that, we need to make that into the hyperlink. So that becomes a hyperlink to the check sheet. And we're going to go to the Excel options and advanced. Now, what we're going to get rid of here is the row and column headers and the grid lines. So that's made that a lot tidier. And if I go to review, I can now protect the sheet. I could put a password in, um, but I won't for now. I'll just leave it blank. Click on OK. What that means is if the students come in here and they try and type there, it won't allow them. It will only allow them to type in the cells that they've changed. I'm going to come back into this sheet, and I'll do something similar. So Excel options, advanced. and we'll get rid of the row and column headers and the grid lines and I can also if I want to get rid of the formula bar and that gets rid of the bar at the top and in fact I could have got rid of the sheet tabs as well so I'll just come back and do that so there goes the sheet tabs click on OK and they've gone I'm now going to protect the sheet click on OK Go back to my test. All I have to do now is delete the contents, 